If you're a residential real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show's for you. Learn the secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field in order to guide you along your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so that you can turn your commissions into cash flow. I'm Randall DeCleared. Let's go, baby. Alan Yanselson. Yes, sir. How's it going, Randall? Good, man. Um, all right, man. So, so the basic format of the show kind of, I, I went through and told you, um, a little bit when we were talking, but, um, we, you know, I'm going to ask you some questions. I have some general, just like questions that are standard for kind of stuff that I'm trying to get. I want to hear a little bit about your history, like what your, you know, where you are in your real estate process. And then, um, you know, this, this show is geared towards agents who are looking to invest in multifamily projects or, uh, commercial real estate in some form or fashion, some kind of income producing property. So everything is kind of geared sure. towards that, right? Um, so, okay. and, and to build passive income as an agent, right? We have a, a lot of time we're spent, sure. we're, we're, as agents, we, we just run around and we're showing houses, we're doing things, and we're actively earning mm-hmm. income. But the second you stop, you stop, right? Right. So, um, so again, I just want to like kind of hammer home on that. And, and the fact that really the goal is to get agents to see that there is a, there's an add on to your current active income where you could actually transition some of that active income into passive income. All right, cool. So Alan, Hey, good to see you. Thanks for taking the time to jump on the show today. Um, just tell me a little bit about your background and kind of where you are in real estate. Absolutely, Randall. Thank you so much for having me over today. And it's a pleasure to be here. My background, so I was actually born in Mexico City and came to San Antonio almost 20 years ago now. My family has been in real estate for a while, starting with my grandma almost 50 years ago. So I've kind of had it in the blood since I was three years old. I would be riding along with her and putting up for sale signs, for rent signs. So, um, you know, it took a while for me to get to where I am, but I went to business school at the University of Texas at the McComb School of Business and then graduated, started working in finance a little bit and uh, marketing and now uh, been in real estate for four years. On, on the broker side, so you, you mainly focus right now on the broker side of the business. And is that was your what your grandma was doing, or was that was she buying? Um, so they they started out uh, also on the sell side and the broker side, but then they switched more into the investment side. Okay, okay. Did you inherit any of those like deals, or have you run uh, investments in the in a sense? So I've helped out with part of the business. Thank God she's still alive, so she's. 84 and wakes up every day, goes to work, collect rent. So, um, you know, there's definitely been some cross collaboration, me being with JB Goodwin at the moment. And of course, like getting a lot of advice from them and they'll come check out my open houses and, you know, like any listings I have, they'll uh, give me constructive criticism, you know, quote unquote. Thanks, Grams. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's definitely been beneficial to, to have that background and experience on my side. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I was reading that in your bio that, and you told me the other day when we were playing pickleball, uh, right. that you speak four or five languages. How many? Five, five, five yeah. languages. Okay. Yes, sir. I know a little <laughs> bit of Yiddish, uh, not Hebrew. Oh, but, say it's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so and, and then you, I saw again in your bio that you were at UT and then did you get a, a dual degree or what did you have? I saw an MA. If- right. Yeah. So I got a bachelor's in business at that time and then went back a few years later to get a master's. So okay. um, that okay. it was separate. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Awesome. And so when you got out of that, like, how did you, what was your process to get into real estate? Was it, you said something that you were in finance. So what'd you do in finance and how did that guide you into getting into real estate? Sure. Yeah. So I started out after uh, graduation, I went over to Merrill Lynch and was working in the financial services sector 
And it was similar to real estate in the fact that it was on me to build the practice and get the clients. So, um, you know, we got all the training, the licenses, and it came to a point where I realized it wasn't for me, mainly on the marketing end of things, which is my background, my major with marketing. So um, it's very litigated, the finance industry, and there's a lot of regulations as well. So in terms of like creativity and being able to have flexibility and innovate with marketing that didn't exist. Like there were a lot of initiatives that I wanted to do and our compliance officer would shut us down. But, um, right. Okay. So you're telling me about, you know, how you got into the, the finance. How was, it sounded like you said litigious or, uh, just difficult because you couldn't do some of the things you wanted to do. Uh, but you were also in, I mean, that's just a right. different form of brokerage. You're brokering right. products, right? You're brokering financial products, very similar to what you're doing right now. You're brokering real estate. Um, so are you with me still? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yes, I can hear you. so how did, how and why did you transition out? Like, it, you know, just, just briefly touch on that. And then I really, what I want to touch on is why you got into real estate. And if you have a bug to invest, right. If you, if you want to start earning some passive income, like how we can kind of talk about that a little bit, but um, yeah. Tell me how you made the transition out of uh, the finance world into real estate. So, yeah. So after um, being laid off and uh, not really sure what I wanted to do, I had a conversation with my mom and my uncle. We were having dinner, a family dinner. And uh, my mom had been insisting for many years to get my real estate license. So she said, why don't you get it now? Like you have the time and, uh, you know, at least worst case scenario, you'll have it as a backup or do it part time. And my uncle actually went ahead and supported me with the licenses and, and paid for all the classes to get registered. So it was a no brainer. I was still doubting it. And then one night I had a dream <laughs> that I should get the real estate license and I uh, came into it, saw what it entailed and really like it. Been in it uh, for four years, going on to five now. Awesome. Yeah. What, um, what do you, what I want to ask, I don't know, just kind of drive into why you like it so much. What do you like about the broker side of it? I'm, I'm a different really animal, like, man. I've always, I've always been on the other side of it. I've always been, sure. I have had my broker license for 10, 12 plus years since 2010 or something. And, mm-hmm. and I've always wanted to control the, uh, the right. actual asset. Right. And, and I think it's because mm-hmm. I'm probably more of a, a numbers person and not so much a people person. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I don't yeah, know, yeah. I, everyone I know that's a good people person is really good at real estate in this, in the brokerage sense of it. Mm-hmm. So, what, right. yeah, sorry, I rambled there, but what do you, what is, what was it? Why do you like, why do you like it so much? I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, to me, a lot of it has to do with the flexibility and the autonomy. So being my own boss, and uh, creating my own schedule, being able to come to the office like today, record a podcast and go to another meeting and not having to be tied into an office for nine hours a day. Uh, Also, of course, like you mentioned, the people side, I love working with people. And even from the beginning, when I got in, uh, my long-term goal is to get into the investment side as well, like you were saying have that passive income, but I figured I wanted to learn it from the ground up. So like get down to the neat and gritty, roll up my sleeves. And um, eventually the goal is, is to have that. Okay. So let's, let's tie into that then. Cause that's a perfect segue into sure. trying to figure out where are you in that, in that journey? Do you want are you, do you have sure. any specific goals to uh, to acquiring or to building your passive income? Because I, we could relate it to single right. family investing or into some commercial income producing property like multifamily. Um, and so right, right. I don't know if like, have you considered that or, or, you know, do you have a timeline and say, you know, in a year I want to start investing or, you know, where are you in that? Right. Yeah. So I do want eventually to have, at least 10 investment properties. Mostly, I think for me, residential is what I'm most comfortable with and 
and know better. But um, yeah, I mean, the goal is within a year to have at least one property uh, that's producing passive income. And whether it's on my own or going in with a partner or some sort of, um, you know, fun, but definitely want to start building that. And to be honest with you, I kind of already have that a little bit because I bought a house about seven and a half years ago. And ever since I bought it, I rent out the empty rooms in my house. House so had, uh Right. Yeah. So I've had tenants in there. And uh, also my property, I'm blessed with the fact that there's a casita in the back. So I rent that as well. And it's really nice to have every month money coming in and depending on the configuration and and whatnot, it almost pays my mortgage yeah. every month. So yeah. it's really nice. And, and, and having that inspires me and motivates and say, okay, let's, let's get more. Like I have already this coming in or right, let's get, let's double it. Let's triple it. Have you ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Many okay. years ago, but yeah, I love yeah. that book. The I quadrant getting into the investor quadrant. Um, yeah. Just because, I mean, that is a big portion of it. You're, if your mortgage is getting paid from right. having people in your property, I would argue that that's not passive. You're actively, uh -huh. you know, recruiting those tenants to come live there. Uh, if anything breaks, uh -huh. I'm sure you're getting a phone call, um, not a property management company. Uh, right. That's you're a realtor. True. You're like, ah, I'm a property manager. <laughs> now too. So I've owned a lot of rentals, right? And so I know very well how uh, time intensive and labor intensive those can be. Uh, but sure. congratulations that you have, right. You're renting things that you, you are receiving passive income. So is your goal sure. of the 10 properties to, to just build that? Do you have like a set number of dollars that you're trying to hit or do you have more just the number of houses because 10 sounds like a good number? No. So I do have a, a goal because I figured if I can, you know, at one point, hopefully in the next 10 years, have the 10 properties and be generating at least a thousand dollars per property, um, then I will have ten thousand dollars in revenue coming in, or depending on how I am with the mortgages being paid off, then it will turn into hopefully all profit. So that's that's the goal. I mean, I've always wanted to be at about 100k a year coming in and i think that's a a good amount for me and and now like as, as i'm looking to hopefully get married start a family then that's eventually where i want to be speaking five languages you're an, you're an exotic <laughs> guy you know world traveler it's, it's not far off man you're gonna be there soon enough popping out kids and Thank then you, and then you need more than ten thousand a month in passive income um, right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. That I know. I know from experience. This is what happens. I'm not. Right. You know, uh, so. All right. Well, I mean, that that the ten thousand dollars per month number seems to be a theme like that is a number that I've wanted for a long time. And I I got into sure. real estate specifically to grow my passive income and got sure. my license, did all those things in order to. Uh, in order to just build my cash flow and the passive income. And then I kind of got and sure. wandered the desert for 10 years or so, flipping houses mm -hmm. and, and just chasing its own. It, it, flipping houses and being an investor on that side of the business is very much akin to brokerage, right? You're selling a product. And once you're done, mm -hmm. you're actively earning income. Once I'm done selling or flipping a house, right. man, I got to go find another one or I'm not going to be able to uh, keep sure. the lifestyle I want to live. And so... Right. You no, know, the the deals that I've done, just as a, uh, mm -hmm. I guess some some rental properties that I've owned. If you're putting debt on mm -hmm. them, and depending mm -hmm. on what kind of debt you're getting, I mean, rates right now have increased. Obviously, that's a big thing in the sure. market that everybody's talking about. Um, yeah. But the 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 spread that you're going to get if you're leveraging seventy to eighty percent on the deal, it's going to be fairly small, you know, um, especially mm -hmm. because the, right. the prices of houses have increased so much. And, um, sure. so typically back in my, you know, when I've, when I've been looking for rentals, single family rentals, I've been targeting, you know, mm -hmm. 1% of the purchase price at least needs to come in as rent in okay. order for me to cash flow it. $100,000 okay. house, I need to get $1,000 a month. 
and then I'll be getting sure. some kind of cash flow on the deal um, as and an the, investor. Uh, the thousand dollars a month that's uh, that's uh, the gross, right? You then go in and, and pay your debt obligation. Correct. Correct. Okay. And and when you look at it, I mean that's I'm not seeing a lot of hundred thousand dollar houses now. Right. If, right. if you are, they need a ton of work, which is I so, sure. so the, the, the other caveat to that is I as an investor full time mm-hmm. buying distressed properties, fixing them up, I was in those mm-hmm. deals for I don't know, sixty five percent of their full market value. Okay. And so or less, right? Some of the first houses I ever bought sure. were twenty thousand dollar houses. And so we're not in wow. that market, right? That doesn't exist. Um Correct. and so finding that type of investment. Uh, where you're going to have a very low basis, it's an affordable property that you can charge enough rent for to actually cover your mortgage. Sure, it's becoming Absolutely. a little more difficult, and so that's yeah. one of the reasons that I I tout multifamily investing so much because you're getting a scale that you're not on the single family side. Um, you can buy mm-hmm. a, a, a door. Let's you know in multifamily speak, you're going to mm-hmm. buy a hundred doors at. Seventy to eighty thousand dollars a door, depending on what your type of product you're looking at. Mm-hmm. And again, you're mm-hmm. you're not necessarily if you're getting eight hundred dollars a month per door, then that's that one mm-hmm. percent on a per door basis, right? Um, compared mm-hmm. to paying one hundred and fifty for a starter house, where you're mm-hmm. still only getting a thousand bucks or twelve hundred bucks a month. Um, it just depends right. on what it is. Obviously, you know, you, every market is different, mm-hmm. but in San Antonio specifically, sure. um, like we're buying, we're buying a, uh, 3,200 square foot house. Uh, there's mm-hmm. no way I'm going to cash flow that house just based on right. the sale price and the rents in the area. I think I can get $2,500, $2,200 a month, maybe in rent and mm-hmm. the house will be worth 400,000. So if I mortgaged it and then it would be like, it's just not right. going to cover. And so every month I'd be coming of out of course. pocket. Sure. So anyway, yeah, that, that's just some, no, some I hear you. on that. If you like, is there something, because whatever your goals are, those are your, your goals, right? What, where you're trying to For go, sure. if you want to buy 10 houses and, and you want uh, to own them free and clear, and you think you're clear, you know, a thousand right. bucks a month on those houses that hits your goal. Is there anything that's kind of stopping you from starting that today? Like, what would you think would be your biggest challenge? Right. So I think in the past few years, I haven't made that a priority in my budget in terms of like, you know, saving for an investment property. And even though it is my goal, I've had a lot of really good opportunities to travel and be part of uh, other projects. Like I just got back from Israel there for almost a month for a really cool uh, event and uh, opportunity. So uh, definitely now, kind of as I'm looking to get settled a little more in life and, you know, like personal side and professional side, then now I'm like, okay, let's sit down and make active plans and laid out plans to be able to fulfill those goals. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things for that, that I could maybe, because now if you're at that stage and you're trying to or you're looking around for opportunity, um, looking for you yeah. know, a couple of things. One, identify if you, uh, so like in real estate, we all have a buy box, right? We're all looking, we can identify exactly what we're looking for. It would three sure. bed, two bath needs this. Da, 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 da. So similarly right. as an investor, you need to figure out, you know, what are you looking for? Are you, do you need cash flow? Because that'll be a certain type of product, right? Uh, a certain type of asset. Uh, right. If you don't, mm-hmm. and you just want to build wealth over time, so you, you're looking for appreciation or you're looking for you know that spread to grow, that'll be a certain type of right. asset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because again, for me, when I'm targeting a uh, a cash producing property, it may be a C class multifamily, or um, it may mm-hmm. be an East Side property in San Antonio that is uh, needs a lot of value add work, so that I can get those rents. To you know, the cash flow is coming in. Um, if I'm looking right. for just you know safe, secure place to put money, buy an A class type of property or B class multifamily. Mm-hmm. Uh, similarly, mm-hmm. you could buy a nicer house in San Antonio that mm-hmm. you know is 
um, likely to appreciate over time. It's in a good neighborhood, that sort of thing. It doesn't need a lot of work. For sure. So, identifying those things for you, like in this mm-hmm. stage of your of, of your investing career, I would, um, mm-hmm. you know, I can help you through some of those things if you want to talk about that offline. But um, I also have awesome. some 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 uh, PDF like documents things that that I can share with you and and anyone who's listening as well. So. Um, That'd be great. Yeah. So I want to say, of course, that, you know, I'm really thankful for you to reach out to me and invite me to this podcast because even from the 20, 30 minutes we've spent together, I've learned a lot and it's almost like in my mind to, to talk about it, it lays out like, you know, what the, the, the goals are and like starting the plan. So uh, definitely, you know, you're, de- you're adding value. Yep. Yeah, I'll, it's thanks, man. I, it's a, it's a thing that is constantly evolving. I mean, your, your investment journey, sure. but just getting started is there are a lot of people who want to start and then they never, they sure. never for whatever reason. So I right. just, the value of creating passive income, again, if you read rich dad, poor dad and getting into the investor quadrant where your money's working for you, I mean, it's just, it's, it's very powerful. If you were earning currently $10,000 a month passively, your trip to Israel would not have uh, hindered any of your brokerage (laughs) business. Right. Um, And so, yeah, you get, you get the benefit of working with your clients. You get the benefit of, um, uh, you know, serving them to the best of your ability, but at the same time, you're growing your passive income on the side. So are you with me? 100%. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's great. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I strongly encourage it. And again, on the single family side, like there are some things, if you haven't looked into, if you don't know what the Burr model is, which is buy re, uh, rehab, refinance and rent. If you haven't ever looked at that, I mean, it's a way to get into single family sure. deals with no money, essentially after you refinance. Mm-hmm. It's a little more challenging now, obviously, because okay. rates have gone up. So, mm-hmm. but you know, you could buy deals from some investors who are selling like mm-hmm. heavy value add single families. Um, so again, we can talk about some of that awesome. stuff at another time, but I would encourage yeah. you to also look at taking some of your commissions that you are earning and looking sure. at a multifamily type of product mm-hmm. that um, mm-hmm. you can invest with a, with a very seasoned sponsor who knows what they're doing. They've run assets in the past. Sure take $25,000 and put it into a deal. And now you've got access to, you know, hundred doors or something. And you're mm-hmm. one of the investors in a deal like mm-hmm. that. And sure. you know, if you do those over time, then they build and build and build. Um, it's not, it's mm-hmm. not a, you know, get rich today strategy. Uh, sure. but it's a way to get sure. into large deals, uh, fairly easily. Right. Um, right. And then, you know, those build over time. So Anyway, something to look That's at. That's great advice. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's see. I have a question here. I, I'm curious how you would answer it just because, you know, it's coming from an agent, to, you know, that is uh, sure slowly started your, your investing journey. Not really. So what advice would you give to agents who got into real estate because they always wanted to own the actual real estate, but they haven't sure. taken the time to actually acquire it. They've just stayed in the brokerage. Right. So I'm essentially giving myself a (laughs) Yes. Yes. Awesome. Uh, No, like I would definitely say to make it a priority, have that, that bucket, if you would, in terms of the, the budgeting and the saving. And like you said, like every commission, instead of going out and, and buying fancy dinners and, and going on luxurious trips, which I haven't, but still, <laughs> you know, like start, start building that fund so you can slowly start getting into it and get towards your goals. Good advice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice, self. No, right, no, I yeah. need to execute. Um, all right, so I'm going to I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions, not necessarily related okay. to uh, real estate. So, um, what mm-hmm. is your favorite pastime that's not related to business? And it's okay if you say pickle because we play pickle, right? Sorry if you say it's not pickle. <laughs> yeah, no, I would definitely say like 
staying active and playing like takeable softball and also some acting and comedy as well. Ah, do you do, you do stand up or what, what do you do? Yeah, I do stand up. I'm also, I'm part of an agency and we, um, you know, have different uh, commercials that we participate in. And I was in, in a few last year, so really enjoy that as well. Nice. You'll have to, we'll give you some links. We'll put them in the show notes so people can go watch you. Dude. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Buy my product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, what is the best thing or memory that you have from the past 60 days? And more specifically, like what is the, the, the best thing has happened to your family, you know, something family related in the last 60 days. Wow. In the last 60 days. Um, well, grandma we came to open finished, house. Right. <laughs> uh, this is like, it, it extends into the community as well, but it was, you know, my family was part of it to where our group, why just say, which is young and Jewish San Antonio, we got a new Torah for the group. So it's very expensive and it doesn't happen many occasions. So um, we went together as a community, like a young adult community in San Antonio and my parents, my brothers, sister-in-law, we all participated, donated. And about a month ago, we had the declaration, like the dedication weekend where we received the Torah that was written in Israel. and it was a very, very big moment for us. That is awesome. That is awesome. I haven't seen that yeah. happen. I've, you know, my wife is Jewish, but I haven't seen that. And mm-hmm. I, haven't, I, I didn't know that was a, like a ceremony that that was. So that's interesting. We'll have to talk about that some. Yeah. I'll figure that out. Um, it's a big simcha. You know what simcha is? No, <laughs> no. A big uh, festivity, a joyous uh, moment. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, congrats. Yeah. That's that's good that you guys had that experience together. Um, all right. And the last Thank one, you. name one or two people who have been most influential in the way you think or most influential to your success. So, well, of course, like, you know, my family, parents, uh, grandmas, but uh, in terms of like mentorship, uh, there's a guy in town called Howie Nestel who owns a marketing firm. He's also from uh, the community and he's been a great mentor for me over the past 10, 12 years, actually going back to when we moved to San Antonio, almost 20 years. So he's been uh, really influential in my life going from, you know, when I was still going to college and attending meetings with him in like shorts and a t-shirt and saying, okay, like, you need to change the way you dress if you want to be part of the conversation and serious. Um, so we we'll definitely say that. And actually, now that I think about it, uh, one of my rabbis, Rabbi Levi Telden, he's been a huge part of my life since we co-founded the YJSA group 10 years ago, but also in my spiritual journey, he's, he's helped greatly learning with him. And uh, now we also have a, a really cool venture called One and a Half Rabbis. So okay, we, okay, okay so you just mentioned that that you started a new project. What was it called? Yeah, so it's called One and a Half Rabbi. Okay. So with this rabbi, I was speaking about Rabbi Levi. Tell them we made a video about three years ago in 2019 to promote one of his classes at the synagogue. And it was a parody about synagogue goer stereotypes and me being like the secular Jew who like goes to synagogue and doesn't know what page we're on and and trying to figure out the different uh, rituals and whatnot. So it was hilarious and it went viral, thousands, like tens of thousands of views. And that started, it's been a journey over the past few years, but uh, we launched a month ago, our new brand. We have social media channels, a YouTube channel. And just today, coincidentally, we had uh, our newest song, like from our newest video, we, we made a parody song. And so the video was a big hit. And now the song is officially on Spotify. 
Apple what? Music, YouTube, yeah, any streaming device you can. That's think awesome, of. man. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You have to what send a me rabbi, a, what, what a rabbi got to do. That's that, the song. Send me a, send me the link. I'll put it in the show notes. We can we can plug it too. Okay. That's fun. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, Alan, it's been real. Uh, we've. Well, yeah. I don't know how it'll come. All cut up. <laughs> we'll see how. Right. That goes. Make but, me sound good, Ryan. Don't make me sound good. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, yeah. We'll make it happen. But hey, in in yeah. in closing, just tell tell everyone how they can reach out to you. I have uh, a link to your bio. I can throw in the in the show notes as well, so that everybody can sure. see what you're working on, and 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 it has your contact information there for JB Goodwin. But um, yeah, just yeah, tell definitely. tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, absolutely. So you can call or text me two one zero four seven three. 9291 or go to my website alanyanselson.com and all my social media handles are also at Alan Yanselson. So that's a great way to keep up with me and everything that's going on. We we look forward to the next rabbi video. Yes, sir. And I look forward <laughs> to seeing you on Pickleball on Sunday. Let's go that's get right. Let's go. <laughs> BH awesome. baby, bring in uh, heat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alan, have an awesome day. Thanks so much. Catch up with you soon. Did you know that 80% of the agents we speak with got into real estate in order to gain passive income so they could obtain financial freedom and become work optional? If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. We'll catch you on the next episode.